Sois de Jésus pour guider ma vie. Mon bien-aimé Jésus, il est à moi, j'en suis à lui. Je choisis Jésus pour guider ma vie. Mon bien-aimé Jésus, il est à moi, je suis à lui. Je choisis Jésus pour guider ma vie. Mon bien-aimé Jésus, il est à moi, je suis à lui. Je choisis Jésus pour guider ma vie. Mon bien-aimé Jésus, il est à moi, je suis à lui. En marchant dans les chemins, dans les rues, observant tous les passants, chacun suivant sa propre voie, égoïstement, tristement. Mon cœur rempli de tristesse, je me pose autant de questions. Seigneur, c'est toi que nous voulons imiter, nous voulons marcher chaque pas, chaque pas de nous, le faire avec toi, comme Enoch a marché avec toi, Seigneur. Aide-nous, Père éternel, à le faire aussi, au nom de Jésus. Amen. Gloire à Dieu. Good are we going to speak about money? It is the first day. We're going to speak about the influence of money in the life of Christian. What is the influence of money? And tomorrow we're going to spout to speak about the impact of money in the church. And on a Sunday, we're going to speak about the objective of this seminary. As we used to say about other seminaries, we want to see it is written. With God, we're going to make exploits. Psalm 29 says, Your God orders you to be strong. The desire of God to see His glory, as we say, it is a power of God. When power is revealed, it is not hidden. It's what God wants. He wants us to bear fruit. It is when you bear fruit, my Father is glorified. He wants. He doesn't want to make us his opponents. He doesn't want to make us famous people. But he wants just to be glorified among us, within us. And God is hurt when he says that in the life of Christians, there is no glory in the life of Christian people. And in our behavior, there are things which prevent the glory of God to be manifested. Gl money is one of the things which prevent the glory of God to be seen in our life. One of the ways to see the level, the spiritual level of someone, to see how he behaves with money. It is a mean to show, to see the level, the spiritual level of someone. You can know by yourself as, as we, are we in good condition with God or not. It is through the way we behave with our money. The way we understand things which are linked to money, if we are carnal, I worry about this, I worry about that, because my ideas are upon money. To know the spiritual level of someone, it is when you see him behaving with money. 
la personne s'est consacrée au Seigneur, c'est ça. Et nous commençons par you can see. Matthieu 6. Matthieu 6. Matthieu 6. Matthieu 6. Matthieu 6, à partir de verset 24, excusez-moi. 24 jusqu'au verset 34. Matthieu 6, 24. Matthieu 6. No one can serve two masters. He's going to hate one and love one. He's going to detach one and deprive the other. You can't serve God and Mammon. This money you're going to end in one camp. There's no equality. Always you're going to end up in one camp, in one side. We when someone is attached to money, one day or another is going to be slave of money. An example, very easy example. Today there are many theories in the churches, theories on teachings. It is not outside of the churches, it is on firms, not on factories, no. But it is within the churches. It has become markets. It is it comes from the love of money. Those people who are preaching are Christians, pastors. But the pastor is clear, he says. One day, one is going one or another. People is going to take a given direction. One day you're going to choose money, to be a slave of money and to do wrong things with money. There are no neutral way. You can serve two masters. There is a choice to, to make. You say, no, I just want to serve God. I don't want to serve money. In one way or another, the teaching is for us all. We must remember about this. We, can't, we must say, no, I don't want to serve mammon. I don't want to save money today. Even it began little, it's going to grow. Verse 25. Don't worry. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. The Lord said the service is linked to money. There is a link. I read. No one can save two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot save God and Mammon. That's why I tell you, in order to avoid, don't worry about what you have to eat. I say to you that, <coughs> so do you worry about clothing? Who can imagine or think that worrying is saving the devil? The people all worrying are saving the devil. It is, that's why it is written, that's why. It links, it links to the what is given before. I tell you, don't worry about what you have, you about your body or what you have to eat. It is something very, very important here. I think it is one of the teachings which pushed people to kill Jesus. When the Pharisees heard this, they were irritated. They were angry because they were attached to money. When you're worrying, you're serving. It isn't about lottery, playing with money. Just when you worry, you're serving mammon. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow or nor reap nor gather into bands yet your heavenly father feed them are you not more value than they 
Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? Who can tell me that he has seen a bird dying because of anger? Of hunger? They can kill a bird, they shoot them. It can be an accident. But seeing a bird dying because he is starving, it never happens. God is speaking to his children, his believers. If the birds who are, who are nothing compared to you, as I say, they can live without starving. How more, you, my children? He says, who among you can add some days to his life. If we worry, can we change things in our life? No, we can't. Verse 28. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field. How they grow. They never toll nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O you of little faith, therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For, Father, for after all these things the gentle thing, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the things shall be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own thing. Sufficient for the day it is own trouble. We, this reading, Jesus have thumb up the thing. Learn to serve God and let all the things God is going to care about you. Jesus hasn't said, you don't have to eat, you don't have to work. No, he didn't say that. He said, first thing, you have to think about God. Then God is going to think, take care about all the things. Even your clothes, your food. Because you're better than a bird, you're better than a flower. In life, as I used to say, we have got choices. You choose to follow this word or, or you choose to live with your former spirit as a fleshly human being. But God wants his glory to be seen through us. How can Jesus send his disciples without money? There is an objective, there is an aim behind this. His objective is to show that God is above money. God is stronger than money. You must know that, think that. How can Jesus tell to his disciples not to take their own money? It is their own money, not money of other people. See, don't take your own money, even. There is a teaching there in his instructions. We think here, my father is stronger than death. What about money? We keep on reading. Luke 16. This passage is something sad. I want to be at the place of the one who is speaking. Also, Jesus said to his disciples, There was a certain rich man who had a steward and an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my master is taking the stewardship away from me. I cannot dig. I am ashamed to beg. I have resolved what I 
what to do. That when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called everyone who is mother debtors to him and said to the first, How much do you owe my master? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. So he said to him, Take your bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. fifty. Then he said to another, To them, and how much do you owe? He said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill and write eighty. So the master commanded the ninjas toward because he had dealt shrewdly. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in the, the generation than the sons of light. And I say to you, make friends for yourself by enrages man that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful. We used to say this, don't neglect the word of God. We ought to say that if you're faithful in least things. When we say the least, it means you are respons responsible to lead the children of Sunday school, to bring them to the toilets and to look after them, to take care of them. When we say it is the least, for God it is not the least, it is something great. What does Jesus say the least? It is money. This text is the same, it's one body. It is not the text coming from another thing, place. There is a following. The one who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. God considers money as being something least, something which is worthless. Do you, will you be able to care about much wealth. The one who is faithful in least is faithful in much. And who is also unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous memo, who will commit to your thirst to the riches? This verse says, is going to hate one and love another. He's going to be touched one and despise. You can save God and my man. It is the same thing here. You must choose. This passage is very sad because God shows that you, we look like to the people who have been given God and they go and change it with milk. You take a kilogram of God and you go and change it, taking one liter of milk. Try to imagine someone who says you on TV taking your kilogram of gold because you are hungry. You go and exchange it. Ways. One kilogram of bread and liter of milk. The one who's saying the sin is going to cry out. This man is mad. Try to imagine the state of that man. God is one of these. You see, those people don't see understand my power. Why don't they use money to use, why don't they use money to have friends in eternal homes? It is said, make friends with in just wealth in order to have friends in eternal homes. You can make money. This, this man made money, made friends with the money of his boss. So that the day he'll be in trouble, he's going to be received on earth. But God says, 
you'll better use the money on earth to have friends in the eternal life, in the system of God. It is sad. Many have not yet left the logic of the world. We have said in, at the beginning, the way you spending your money is a kind of thermometer. It allows. And the Lord said, it is something difficult to read here. Verse 8. The people of this earth are wider than the people or are wider than the disciple. The way we are serving God it is we are speaking about angels, the system of God. The way we are working is something bad. We, if we compare to the way the people of this world are ruling, are spending, are leading today, someone can know that he, he received the boss of Sony. What is going to do? He's got a son who's going to have him pass an exam. He's going to do everything for the, the boss of Sony to give him food, to bring and see the best landscape of Rouen. Because say, after that, I'm going to ask my child to be taken in his firm, to be a trainee. In this world, the people know how to do things with their friends. But we, as Christians, we don't know how to work things with God. How can we work with God? To give God everything. That's all. Do you know, my beloved? Have you seen the publicity of uh, advertising of Sovenco? Those firms called people to give them money to lend, to bring money to them. If you give, for instance, 1,000, Euro. What we call live of the book. Our bank book when you give money, we can call live are in France. In money, one percent. God says. Is going to give us 60%. When you see this person, see that 10 was going to be multiplied by 100. He said, Oh, they are mad. God is speaking about, speaking to Christians, they are mad. In my system, it is 60%. In the world, it is 1%. They're going to what is the system of the world? I am very angry. I don't, I'm not following what I'm written. I've written. The system of this world is 1%. The system of God is 60%. Some people are living with their money under their pillow. God say, see, if you were God, you'll be hungry about that person. People don't understand. Christians don't understand. With God, God multiply. 
An example, very easy. When you sow a seed, how many fruit does it give? It can be a mango tree or a pear tree. When fruit appeared, what, just one pear, how many pears would you have to have us? Sometimes four hundreds. But you tell me, the people who said to Jeremiah strongly, openly, they say openly to Jeremiah, with God we have nothing, but with the false God we have things. Maybe you're going to tell us, we have not seen. I say to you, you haven't seen it because you don't want to see. What God gives is full, it's complete. But you want it just to see the bill, the money. But God has given you more than that. Something complete in which, in which you have got money. Some people say, yeah, God is with us. Because I have bought a new car. My Credit for my house is now at the end. I have one. I have fifteen thousand euros in my account. I have what I have. You have what you have. It is according to your mind, but you don't have what you must have. You don't have what you should have and the one who wanted to give you that is sad because wanted to give you more is not at ease because and it delays plan for you because he wanted to give you more for you to accomplish his will but you don't know that and you're going to stop the plan of god in your life if through you God do want to buy a plan for a missionary mission. But you happy to have two houses, two new cars, no more than that. But God say, you selfish. You just think about yourself. You think about yourself. And you are happy. You see that God has given you those things. You are in agreement with God because you you have got more than the other people. But the people who are in sin, they have got better than you because they have got more, more much more things. It is your selfishness. The aim it is to have what God has wanted to give us, a plan to give us, not what we have selfishly using. We're going to go faster. The most important thing is that God speaks to us. We read second book of Kings, chapter 13. It is something clear we must understand to take what God has planned for us for us, not just be rejoicing about what we have by ourselves. Second Kings chapter 13. It is another story of something deep. Jesus always seek what is 20%, no, 100%. God is going all the time to call us to go deep with in his way. He say to go through the narrow door. With God, we must go deep in things. Second Kings, chapter 13, verse 14. Elisha had become sick with the illness of which he would die. Then Joaz, the king of Israel, came down to him and wept over his face and said, O my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen. Joaz, he is faithful now. 
the one who is he called the one who is dying who is sick he called him horseman of Israel even he knew that even this man was dying to himself was always the army of Israel because even if he was dying this man could defend his Israel because he was a man of God he had, he had faith and Elisha said to him take a bow and some arrows so he took himself a bow and some arrows then he said to the king of Israel put your hand on the bow so he put his hand on it and Elisha put his hand on the king's hand and he said open the east window and he opened it then Elisha said shoot and he shot, and he said, the arrow of the Lord deliverance, and the arrow of deliverance from Saris, Syria, for you must strike the Syrians at Afek till you have destroyed them. Then he said, take the arrow. So he took them, and he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. So he struck three times and stopped. And the man of God was angry with him. And I said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you had destroyed it. But now you will strike Syria only through time. People can say, oh, it's difficult. How could he know? But this man didn't want to strike all arrows. They taught him to throw the first arrow. He did it and he had the good promise of God. And the prophet taught him to strike other promises. He would have struck many, many arrows, but stopped. You have tried it, try to imagine. You've got a good promise. 60 euros. You gave 10 euros, then you win. They say, you try in the machine, they say, tell you that it multiplies money. You give 10, you just keep with 20 euros, you keep the money, you don't win. You try with 10, you've got 15,000, they say, it's going to continue. You keep your money in the pocket and you just put two euros. Most of the children of God, they have seen the glory of God. When they sacrifice themselves, they are giving money to God. Thump. In a moment, they saw things, greater things with God. I have obeyed to God for this or that. Oh, God is giving me good things. But the following days, they keep the things God has given them instead of keeping on with the same machine. You still have tried with 10. You've got when one, one, you've got 15,000. It is written, the man of God was angry. They were the really the people of God. He couldn't say to throw all these arrows, but didn't say that because he knew the system of God. Just say, but he knew himself the impact of that. But the king just threw three arrows. He said, Oh, Jaws. You have thrown all the arrows. You would lose nothing, my beloved. Peter told Jesus one day, I have followed you. We have followed you. What do we have? Jesus told Peter, whoever leaves his house, his wife, for me is going to have more than that. Thousands and hundreds. We are going to have what is promised. It is a reality, it's the truth. Why speak about money? As we have taken those examples. God, money is something 
training was stopping the work of God. It is a kind of break. For many people, it has become an idol. An idol. When the glory of God is was to be shown in the place, what did the people do, the kings or the prophet in the Old Testament? What did they do? Eli killed the prophet of Behan. Elijah invited them in Mount Carmel and killed them. When Joshua lost the battle against the small city of Ai, how did he solve the problem? He destroyed the people who prevented the glory of God from being seen. This was a can. What did the true God, kings of God, did? They destroyed idols. With this, the link with Mark 16. These are the miracles who will accompany the people who follow me. In my name, they are going to cast the demons. He begins by casting the demons before the glory of God. If we must clean the way. And before Jesus come, John the Baptist came to swept away. Jesus said, in my name, they will cast the demons. At the, in the past, they rejected idols. But today, we cast out demons. That's why where the true Christians are, they are going to fight evil spirit because there are evil spirits up to working preventing people to glorify God and leading people to sin against God and they restrain the glory of God and so God found people team people who go and cast away dem demons you must know what God taught G Jeremiah. I've imported you prophet so that you can uproot and destroy and then you can rebuild and plant. We speak about it because we know that money is one of the things which stops the glory of God to be, to be revealed because many people are prisoners of money. As God said, we can't have two masters. So first thing, God is going to destroy the first, the, the other master to set people free. Many people are slaves, they don't know about it. Many are worshippers of money, of Satan. To be worshippers, it is not to be as politicians, dictators or bank managers, managers. When you worrying, it is a kind of worship. It is saying Matthew chapter chapter six. When when you the money you spend it as you want. It is not biblically. It is kind of idolatry. Money was created to help people exchange things. I think the past. People were exchanging your goods. If you have got milk, I have got other things. Meat, we can exchange it. You've got wood, I have got water. We exchange. But at a time, all the people don't need everything. You want to exchange money with my water of God? I have got them. So if we, people want try to find other things which help people exchange, that's the way they created money. But money in that system. You can have everything through money. It means everything, if all the people can have money, with money they can buy what they want. So money has become powerful. Because you can have everything with money. Do you know why? 
How people worship false gods, today it is quite different. Even if it's you like. But in the past it was very clear. Every god, each god, you must remind, no. Each god has a role in the life, in the daily life of people. Astarte was a god of fertility. Mars was a god of war. Behel was a god of, of rain. Remember about the struggle in Mount Carmel. It was about rain. Each god has a role. Amon Ra in Egypt it was the god of sun. That's why the last miracle it was darkness. God sent darkness in Egypt. Every god has a role to play. What would you want to say? God, the man worshipped his god according to his own desire. The one who worshipped Baal, it was God because he wanted rain for his harvest. And mass was because man was going in war. But today it is money controlling all these other gods. With money you can have children. You can have medical exams. You can be operated. You can adopt. With money you can have children. You can have water. You can order water. That what people were washing this other different kind of gods. But today with money you can Money has got this solution. Money is now has now become God because money has replaced all the other gods in the past. We have read Mammon. Mammon is God. It is a God of money because it can give what the other small God gave in the past. Today, Mammon has got that power to give. What was in the past, man was given to help people exchange things. But today, if it goes more than that, it's good faster. It is now possessing things. It has become a god. That's why God said, "You can't serve two masters." And we want to explain things so that we go out of this slavery because first first of all we use money in lodging the aim of exchanging as we said it is a mean of exchange you have wealth you exchange your wealth with another wealth but as we don't need everything at the same time, money helps you when you need milk, you can buy milk. Because you can't exchange milk or flour at every time, flavor at every time, or because you can need to have service, to need clothes. You can have money at the time you need. You can use your money to satisfy the need. It is not bad. When you use it for the needs, it is not something bad. But when can money become dangerous? When you use money as a kind of power to have everything. Now it is something sliding. The first sliding, it is consumer spirit. Because it can't have everything. We have read it. 1 John. Two. 1 John chapter 2 verse what is in man the convertedness of eyes of the flesh and the pride of life 
the lust of the flesh. It is written, my beloved, don't love what is in the world and the things which are in the world. Because I'm trying to find this passage. It is written, do not love the world and the things which are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of the life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of, of it. But who does the will of God abides forever? Everything is going to pass away. The true words is in heaven. Money is just a mean of change. It is not a problem if you satisfy the daily needs. But when the danger is when you need money to have everything, the dictators use it. Solomon said money can give everything. It is not law as people used to do it. It is just... Solomon just noticed with money you can do everything. It is dangerous to tie the moment. It's sliding when you now going to look for the thing you, you really don't need. I'm going to buy because I just want to consume. I don't need that thing because I just want to buy because it is a lust of my flesh because I have seen the things. When my body reacts, I just want to consume. It is a lust of man which leads from the need which is normal to consumption. Today, we speak about our society as cons consumer society. In the past, it was consumer of agriculture, of industry. Agriculture or industry. Today, our economies, our economies go up when there is consuming. When there is no more, when people don't consume, our economy go down. So people are buying things they really don't need. And now it is the danger to the fall. People just buy because they body have reacted. It is the lust, the pride of life. Because they have seen other people, seen a limousine of 15 meters, they buy the limousine of 20 meters. They don't need it, it's just the pride of life. At the beginning, it was normal to use money. Now, it becomes something which is there to satisfy our lust, the spirit of consuming. At the beginning, it was a, a normal behavior. Now, you, when you are led by the spirit of consuming, it is because your eyes have been touched. You buy because your body has shaken, but you really don't need it. The spirit, consumer spirit, say, we say to you, wake up, wake up. Another sliding, it is material security or safety. Because money can give you everything, but what, do we, what does man want? To be satisfied in his need. And what is he going to look for? He's going to look for through his own means to be satisfied every, thing, every time. So he's going to use his money to be secure materially. And all the time he wants to have. So at the time, money becomes his protector, his God. And money becomes the one who's keeping him insecure. And mammon is now worshipped. Man has become now the master. It is always money. I know my future is secure. See, for my children, money is going to help. 
When I walk, we have got many children there. Many young people. France gave them scholarship. It freely. France pay them school freely. But they don't want to learn. So money is not going to help them to succeed. If they don't want to work. When the son of Sarkozy had a problem because he wanted to be the leader of he didn't have the diploma, uh, university diploma. But his father is rich, has been rich for a long time. But his logic of being materially secure, they say, money is going to keep me away from difficulties. As it is in the Bible, the man said, Hi, Luke chapter 12. About the man who says, I have got money. Luke 12, 13. Then one from the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he also said to him, Man, who made me a judge or an in arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take heed. And beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things possesses. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns, brood greater. The there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, a drink, and be merry. Steve Jobs, how old was he when he died? He wasn't 60. The director of Nintendo. He had just died. That firm which made games. They were billionaires. This man has died. It was about 50 years or 55 years old. He died from a cancer. The director. The founder of Subway. Of Subway. The big sandwich. He had just died. He was 60. If you don't know, I have read in the article. I didn't know. Subway is more spread than McDonald's in the world. But this man didn't even reach 70 years old. It's what God is saying here. There are some villages who are just living of bread and cheese, and they live more than that, longer than that. Some people live over 100 years. They are poor. They don't have all these belongings. But the devil makes you understand, makes you understand that money is going to give you longer life. People are dying when there are earthquakes in California. People are running away because of fires. They, when they bought the houses, they say, our future is secure. The true treasure is in heaven. Since in on earth you go when you have made your money for the heaven. When you think your security is in money, you're going wrong. Other people think that money gives the power and honor. With money, you can lead and people come to you and boast and bow in front of you. With money, you can have an apartment. They, it gives you power, honor, and glory. And there's something which is sliding, which is the most dangerous. 
it becomes pleasure when you touch money, a bill. It brings you joy, pleasure as you have drank the coke. Some people just focusing money, they have it. Instead of buying a big hamburger and eating when money takes away your hunger, your just pleasure is just to mark, to see money, or if you go to the internet to see your account, you forget to eat because just you satisfy with your money in your account. It is dangerous. You say, today I just sleep because I'm satisfied with just seeing money and I'm going to take my breakfast tomorrow. You take pleasure just in the presence of money. Just you see money, you happy. You satisfy. Many people have reached that level. When we see things going on in church, it's see that. People want just to see money. The last report we saw on TV. The first pastor that is filmed openly, did not hidden camera. He asked his he asked his partners, how much money do we have? It, it is an open camera. It is a visible camera. Oh, my beloved. They have reached that level. Money gave them direct pleasure. It is something which is linked with ghost. I'm going to give you spiritual sickness. Les maladies qui sont liées à l'argent. Sicknesses. Là, j'ai cité l'influence de l'argent. Influence of money. L'influence de l'argent. D'abord, c'est quelque chose pour les gens, c'est bien. Mais après, il y a des glissements. At the beginning, it is good. And after the sliding. Les maladies spirituelles, la première, c'est la varice. Les selfishness. Où tu as peur de dépenser. You take. You are afraid of spending money. You keep money, but you don't spend that money. You just keep money. Money is living. It and it does, does it give you nothing more than give, making the thing that you happy. You must use your money. Money must help. With money, you must have friends in eternal homes. You just keep him money, give him money. There is no project. Now it is just selfishness. You're afraid of letting money go. The second his sickness. Over consuming. It can be sickness. That person must consume and consume. And that that person end up having debt and you can fall in over being debted and that's why many people have become harmless they have over debt and no peace and family at the beginning they had the spirit of consuming having debt and having more and more debts. But the Bible says we must be satisfied with what we have. We must learn to be happy with what we have. We don't need to have everything. What God has planned for us is sufficient. It knows our sickness. The dream. The people who planning to have money rapidly. Oh, I forgot to, to say it. God has given us money for our needs. God has given us the way to have money. It is working, fruitful work. When we work, you can have money to satisfy your need. But also, pe but people now want to have money without working. It can be the work of God or in other words, you kind of work. It, you serve someone and that person pay, give the wages. 
It is a job. It is work. But now, some people want to go out from that way of working. They want money rapidly. They don't want. They don't want work to work, but they just want miracle. Many are dreaming, dreaming about that. Rapid money. Business which are not in clear in Congo. You, you see people say they are waiting for prison. You have made things to have money. How can you explain someone giving you money to have what you have done? You see, I have sold a pant, trousers. But in order to have money, I have to pay again. If something is not clear, someone tells me. I have made business. I'm waiting for them to give me millions, but I must give money first. And you go and have debts to pay for to have money. It is unclean, unclear things, things which are not, which are dim, which are not clear. Business which are not clear. They say, I'm just waiting for a parcel. But they don't say what they are waiting. They just, after making business, they, I'm just waiting for a parcel. Even in, among Christians, they need money without working, money fast, fast money. It's become just a dream. They won't just sleep and wake up with diamond under their bed. God has said no. In the book of Thessalonians, the one who doesn't work mustn't eat. And the money of dream is corruption. People are bribed in order to have more money. In other sickness, spiritual sickness. As we have said it. Just seeing money, you now be, you are now feeling pleasure. We must be aware. Alert. God says he's going to take care of us. We're going to read some passages to have the thought of God. We must listen to the word of God and practice the word of God. Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. Man is not going to live only on bread, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. God wants you to live by his word. Even you eat, eat bread, but the word of God is going to supervise everything. Hebrew 11. Through faith we know that the universe has been created by the word of God. So that what we see has been created from the thing we don't, has been created by invisible things. We must be struck to the things which are invisible. But we don't want it. But some of them, of us, have chosen that way of saying things. Be blessed. God be blessed. The glory of God is not about material things. The glory of God is above material things. Hebrews 6, 33. Matthew 6, 6, 4, the kingdom of God. And you will have the remaining given by God. 1 Peter and load all your worries on God and he's going to keep to take care of you by himself. Uh, 
dans laquelle je suis la assurance logement I have an insurance company which is about my house d'un nettoyage payé par eux they tell me that they can clean my house and in my former house we called two firms to find the firm to come and clean my house we called and I prayed and we had a firm to clean my house the Lord said he's going to take care of us Philippians 4, 19. We must memorize these passages. My God. It is written, And my God shall supply all your need. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches. It is not, not 1,000. God is so rich that he's going to supply to your need according to his riches. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. It is something beautiful. We used to say it is how the marriage is beautiful, but I prefer to say how the word of God is beautiful. With the word of God, you are working upon the water. With Jesus, you work upon the water. With his words. And my God will supply your, all your need according to his riches in glory. In glory by Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 When we in mission, we serve the Lord. I used to speak about with my brother David. I say, we eating. Something. We don't understand why the people here are with the salmi of Rouen. The thing that spending for God is suffering. My God will supply all your needs. Eating the cube, fish cube. We say the mission of God is glue. Is something good. We'll go to Oslo. With God will be in heat. My God will supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. Jesus said, go empty pockets. I am with you. We must go out of slavery. Let's go out from slavery. Don't care about tomorrow. Let's look for the job. God seeing our desire is going to give us what we need. You know that? Another example. I don't want to go to Gabon to have the need, the desire to go to Gabon. My beloved planned for us to go to eat in a Mississippi restaurant. We didn't know about that. When we arrived there, in another beloved, I've changed the program for us to go and eat at another place. And we finally went to Mississippi. We tried all the restaurants. It doesn't work. God is taking care of everything. God, my God, shall supply all your needs. Entre les autres, qui veulent avoir les poches remplies, aller au Mississippi, 
other people who wanted to go to the Mississippi restaurant with the money on their pockets. But I went there without money on my pocket, but I ate the, the same way. The different mega see the glory of God. My pockets are empty. I'm penniless, but I do the same thing other people who have got money. This is my God. We must humble ourselves. We must accept the way of God. It is not to be poor to be penniless, but to size the glory of God. It is my account. Uh, my bank is in heaven. You are more powerful because no rabbi can go there. God says, take and righteous wells and make friends with them to have friends in eternal homes. It means use money according to the will of God. Use money according to the wisdom of God. As God said, he has given the wisdom to us to use money. The people of the world, God said, they knew how to use money. When we see advertising, the people of the world say the teddy bears just they knew how they, th they sell it even a child when a child cry the parents are obliged to buy teddy bear for the child Jesus knew himself how it works we must obey the word of God taking what God has given us and planting it, God himself is going to surprise us. God, we pray, pray you to help us to be wise, to become wise. Help us to understand your power. Give us your wisdom, Lord. Give us your wisdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. So we know to become wider than the people of darkness, so that not to fall in the trap of Joas, who just struck three arrows. It wasn't difficult to throw many arrows. Prevent us to say, oh, just we have what we need. Without seeing what you can do for us to be the blessing for other people. Help us to do things what you're going to help your kingdom go forward. Help us to want seeing your glory. Let us use the money of this world to our friends in eternal hands. So to be. To Jésus, je choisis Jésus. 